Oh, Cosmos, man. Uh, there's some videos in that file, uh, in the link that I showed. There's some videos with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, oh my God, I got to shake his hand. It was so awesome. everyone to ultimate gamer podcast this is episode 37 and my boy andy here has just come back from a very long three-day adventure good evening everyone and the adventure was actually a little while ago but yes i've still taken the entire week to you know recover <laughs> <laughs> it was it was intense man <laughs> well this guy was taking gratuitous amount of pictures of she males uh, you'll understand if you uh, if we work this right, you should be seeing a few uh, interesting photos from. Uh... <laughs> By the way, there was also two or three booths dedicated to nothing but hentai, ecchi, and yaoi. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and and of course, crowds around them. I I just couldn't help it. I had to stop by. It was it was near the uh, well. I'll, I got a story to tell you later on with one of the videos that I hope actually like works, but. We'll get to that later. First of which, <laughs> what everyone wants to hear, the PlayStation 4. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. If you are getting a PlayStation 4, skip until, I don't know, just don't listen to whatever I have to say. Because you're going to think it's an opinion that you should hold in high regard, which nobody does, trust me. Nor should it be taken as like, I got an issue with the controller. <laughs> That's all he touched. <laughs> No, uh, we there was a booth uh, literally at the entrance to the show floor uh, that was uh, not so much for Sony, it was uh, for Ubisoft. They were showing a, a, a demo for uh, Watch Dogs, which, by the way, Watch Dogs, I actually like that game, but I don't like it enough to get the console. <laughs> well, you could still get it for an Xbox 360. I'm not getting a 360. But anyway, you have a 360. No, my 360 died out like about a year ago, dude. Okay, it's going to be out on PC. Hoorah. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> what happens is something very peculiar. I have large hands. This is unfor this is an unfortunate side effect of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I have large hands. Now, you know people are going to going to hit you for that. Okay, I have large hands, big fucking whoop. Whenever I've used controller, and this is going back all the way to the days of the N64 single joystick controller, instead of using the actual like middle of my thumb, you know where the fingerprint is, mm -hmm. I've used that joint that's under the knuckle, the flats point, I think you called it. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Sue me. Okay. No, I'm just trying to like convey this as clearly as possible because I suck at this. Okay, the I part that, that lets you flex your thumb. <laughs> yeah, right under, you know, where that crease is, uh, below your thumb, yeah. Your joint. I use, that, <laughs> I use that on the actual joystick because it's just easier, and so I don't have to bend my thumb so much when I'm using controllers. Especially for the DualShock, because I've been using it when I played the PlayStation 1, I played the PlayStation 2, played the PlayStation 3. That's how I've been doing it for years. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's not. Maybe this is something that might actually turn into a story later on. Or it might be something that they may have overlooked. The center of the controller is a touchpad, and the entirety of it. You can't actually tell the edge of where the touchpad stops and where the rest of the controller is. And it's extremely sensitive. It's beautiful. It's ergonomic. It's, you know, the interface is great. My problem is, is that in the middle of a very tense situation, when you really get to play, you tend to, like, touch the pad. 
And I don't know if it's maybe the current build that they have. Maybe this is an option that will be changed later. So don't make this, whatever I'm saying, you know, change your mind on whether you're getting it or not. It fucking destroys the game for me. <laughs> it, it takes you completely and utterly out of any scenario. In. And I was playing the game. I, I tried the demo that they have uh, when you're uh, trying to uh, save this guy and you're using... Uh, light switches in a display with a car that's out in the open in order to get around people when you're trying to like get him like around a group of guys with guns I don't know it's it's chaotic all I remember is like wow this is really fucking intense and this is great and the controls are snappish and I can just jump into and why is the menu up <laughs> okay <laughs> back okay I'm good I'm getting him through oh god this is fucking into and why is the fucking menu up <laughs> Like, I lost my, like, they only gave us a certain amount of time inside the booth. You had to wait outside in the line that was like a 30-minute to 45-minute wait on the line. And you weren't allowed any electronics inside. It was mad dark. Extremely dark inside the room. So all you saw was like, I actually, on some, and I'm, I don't know if there's any information to link this. I was only there. I was only able to get into the booth once because I really didn't want to go in there again and wait another 45 minutes on the line. Okay. But I only really saw one or two systems, like, in display cases. Everything else seemed to have been closed units. Huh. And they were more than the normal amount of cables coming out of these units in the back. Huh. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were actually running PCs with, you know, their the Sony OS native on different hardware. Or probably the same hardware. Who knows? All I know is that I did not see the, you know, the sleek... Now universally known PS4 design boxes. I, I didn't see them. They 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 may have been running on actual. <laughs> they may have been running on fake boxes. I'm just now, saying. So wait, you never saw the console itself in person? Or? Console itself, no. Huh. They, I think I was. Uh, they had a display for one of them that had like the plexiglass display, but that one was like surrounded by a bunch of people, and so whenever I walked by, I saw the silhouette from a distance. Huh. But in all the other displays, all the other, like, uh, you know, places where you, like, sit in front of the thing and try it out, it, no, you, they, there was nothing. It was just the screen and the controller. Huh. And the controller had this, like, weird wire next to, like, the television. You didn't actually see the system. Hmm. Which is kind of strange because this is pretty close to launch time. You would think that they would have a whole bunch that they'd like to show. Exactly. And that was actually something where... um. Last year, at last year's uh, Comic-Con, Sony had a huge booth there. I mean, they were showing off games that didn't even come out yet. You know, they're showing off uh, God of War uh, Absolution or whatever the fuck it was called. Um, they were call showing off PlayStation All-Stars or Battle Royale. They were showing off yeah. a lot of games. And, um, you know, I'm surprised that, you know, for their system that's coming out in less than 30 days, you know, they wouldn't have any sort of like demonstration of the console like that just seems so stupid i mean you look at nintendo nintendo because has every game there yeah oh my god the nintendo booths were insane Did they had you... yeah i got to play uh the uh you probably already have it the uh legend of zelda the remade of, uh, remake yes, of the wind waker i have that yes and i have to agree i played the original wind waker played this new one it looks beautiful exactly and they fix a lot of stupid things yeah i did not I was actually surprised because I was not expecting this to actually be that eye-catching. But when I sat down and I saw it and I started playing on the Wii U, which, by the way, had never played on the Wii U before. <laughs> it took you a year to actually try one? It took me a year to find a situation <laughs> where I would say, hey, I'm not going to lose any time playing on this. <laughs> yes, Nintendo, you're not a time waster this time. <laughs> you know what, uh, John? What? You're right. The system has got it. Nintendo found a way to get, you know, a decent console out on the market. Unfortunately, you know, it's the last console era. So, <laughs> at least they're good going out the gate. <laughs> but yes, oh my god, and Wind Waker was... You know the art style? A lot of people hated the art style when it I think would. it looks fine. I loved it at the time when I first saw it because, hey, it's supposed to be a kiddie story. I mean, don't get me wrong. I wasn't happy that I didn't get... You remember back in uh, the 2000 Expo that they showed the yes. fight between Ganondorf and Link? And everyone's like, oh my god, yes! 
But no, no, we didn't get that. We got Wind Waker. But you know what? Wind Waker was beautiful and awesome in its own right. But even even if you go to play the original like copy on the GameCube, it still looks good after all these years. Mm-hmm. It's something that has completely stood up it, to the it's test associated, of time. associated, like, yeah, the associated, like, style. I mm-hmm. mean, as long as you got enough processing unit and brilliant colors, yeah, it's going to look beautiful. But this one, I don't know. There was just something different about it. The geometry was smoother. Everything. They added like, a better lighting. They've added. Um, there's a, there's a whole list of things it they've must done. Have been something like ridiculously simple and complex at the same time, but it was just. Oh my but god! It was my only form. complaint with Wind Waker in general it was just the how long it took to go from point A to point B on the fucking boat. I hated <laughs> that. I mean, they they added something I think you would appreciate. They added it's called the Swift Sail, and it's a feature only on the HD version. And uh, when you, you have to buy it at an auction house, and when you get it and use it, you go twice as fast, and the wind is always blowing in the direction you want to go. You want to go, yeah. That's awesome. Um, but uh, I just, I th- I'm very close to beating the game. Um, <laughs> you, you know, I have to say, uh, the game definitely brought back a lot of memories. But I'm glad that you at least tried it out. Um, but, I, you know, hey. here's, here's the ultimate question. Would you buy a Wii U? Sorry, no. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, no, did you... I, and I hate mm-hmm. it because it's one of those things where, like, if I had known about this two or three years before, if I wasn't, like, focusing on, like, my PC, if I just thought, hey, it, back then I was a console guy. I used to be a console guy. Ask, ask Jack here. I used to be a console. <laughs> Xbox, PlayStation, I had a no, Wii. No, no, this guy took off of school for fucking Xbox 360 time and time again. Halo yeah. 3 came out, you didn't see him for a week. No, 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 no. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Wasn't that the last year? So, yeah, you probably didn't see me for a week because I was like... I had Ooh, already, he I had, had the bad case early. of the flu. <laughs> yeah, I, the problem was is that I had already finished all my classes and got all my points, so my last year of high school was just being there because i didn't want to graduate early that's it <laughs> it was gym class and study halls <laughs> yeah study hall study hall study hall and then computer lab study hall study hall study hall. <laughs> mm-hmm. i could have left for most of the day and nobody would have noticed but anyway that's besides computer the lab was aka lunch <laughs> yeah yeah i even spent yeah i spent lunch in there as well oh hell yeah and magic cards <laughs> and by the way if this convention has proven anything to me from my own like collection of gadgets, it is that the Netsis 7 second generation tablet is the best fucking thing on the market. <laughs> the, I, I can I, attest I, that. I think it's really good. The only problem that some of the pictures that I've took are blurry was because were because people walked in front of me and threw off the autofocus. When I turned off the autofocus and used a manual focus, it actually worked even like just a little bit better. And I was able to go through the entirety of Sunday, which was from 9 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the afternoon, on 2% battery. I got video, I got photospheres, I got high-def uh, rolls. It's, it's a yeah, wonderful It's, it's a great tablet. I just it's think, I mean... It's a great built machine. It is something mm-hmm. that we probably all need in our lives at some point. <laughs> it's just amazing how cheap it is. Yeah. That's that's the thing I can't get over. It's like it does everything the iPad does and more, only and better, you know? and it's cheaper. <laughs> it's half the price of the lowest end iPad. It's actually a little bit better built because it's built to be a little bit rugged. I love it where it's yes, I love that it doesn't get scratched like a fucking iPad. Have you ever seen the back of an iPad? Yeah, it's just a terrible mess. But like I, I, I've dropped my Nexus uh, Seven once, and nothing has happened to it. It's in perfect shape. You can't even tell I dropped it. I used to have a generation like I'm not gonna lie. I used to have a generation one Nexus, and it broke. But the problem was is that it only slightly cracked and destroyed the digitizer inside, mm-hmm. only because it fell two stories. How, how the fuck does it fall two stories? Uh, long story, my bathroom was being uh, remodeled and I had to go in a different entrance and unfortunately I slipped on something and there was an open window. Anyway, the main thing is is that two <laughs> stories up, straight down, no protection on it by the way, I got a scratch on one side in the rubber, which basically by just ru- like rubbing the, the rubber back just goes away. Mm-hmm. And in the front, it cracked. But the problem is that it cracked a little like a hairline crack on the, on the, uh, on the glass itself which was right on top of the digitizer chip, which is the one that takes the input. So <laughs> I, I would have to replace the digitizer, but not the LCD screen. <laughs> yep. 
But hey, you know what? With a, with like about a hundred bucks or maybe less, I can replace it like that. I'm just planning on doing it later since I wanted. I needed a reason to get the second generation. <laughs> second generation is so much better though. Yep. Quad core uh, and, processor. It's got a. Bla- it's it's basically the same specs as the HTC One. I mean, the CPU is just less powerful, but GPU wise, they're the exact same graphics card. And by the way, as a seven inch uh, uh, screen device, it has the best resolution on the market for that size device. So yeah, the nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Yep. Smexy. Anyway, uh, what well, what else did I find? Oh. Big thing in Comic Con for some reason, Mega Blocks. Mega Blocks is coming out with, <laughs> with a Lego, uh, not Lego, a Mega Blocks set for Call of Duty. Well, Mega Blocks, you know why? It's because Lego lost their um, their copyright. License. Yeah. So Mega Blocks is coming out with a Call of Duty set, which, by the way, actually looks pretty nice, even though I hate Mega Blocks. Yes, yes. Mega Blocks are basically the poor man's Lego. Yeah. <laughs> It it's, is it's half the quality. Lego. <laughs> yes. Leave me in Lego. Uh, along with that, they had huge displays. I think I took a couple of photos of uh, Promethean Knights in scale. Mm. Scale Promethean Knights made entirely out of Mega Blocks. I think there's one or two photos in the reel which I provided for uh, Jack here. Yeah, I mean, I'm um, looking at the, the Call of Duty ones. Yeah, there was an entire truck behind it made out of Mega Blocks, but I just, like, <laughs> I, I didn't care enough. This was, like, beginning of Saturday morning, had a bit of a hangover. <laughs> I just wanted to get to the first panel. Uh, let's see, what else? We had Captain Crunch, we had the uh, Red Rangers, Green Ranger, met the Green Ranger. A little bit of a douchebag, but, you know, still love him. <laughs> You know, for for all of us who grew up in the late 90s, you know, the original first season, Green Ranger, who eventually became Red Ranger, or Blue Ranger, was it? I don't know. I have no idea. (coughs) Either way, we all wanted to be Green Ranger and then the White Ranger later. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, there was a... But we all wanted to do the Pink Ranger. Oh, no. I was Yellow Ranger all the way, man. Yellow Fever. (laughs) What the fuck? Uh, I'm, I'm horrible. I'm just horrible. Well, anyway, yeah, there was a, a I don't know. I've gone to Comic-Con before, and there's always been like a, like a very, very thick divide, a very, very fine divide between the comic book fans and then like the general geekdom, the video game fans. Of, well, I see that you, you found uh, uh, Ocarina Heaven. Oh, there's a story. That's the story that I wanted to get to. And there's a video that I'm trying to get to work. And hopefully, if I get it to work, it'll be in this uh, at the end of this episode. And once I tell the story, it'll make more sense. I was on the show floor. I was all the way in the far back. This is where people are mostly selling things. Because in the front of the show floor is the freebies. It's the you know big ticket items. In the back are the independent sellers, the ones that go with the comic cons or whatever cons in order to sell their own homemade stuff or sell figures or antiques. Okay. All the way in the back... In the hub of, like, if you've never been to a convention, there's, like, this dull roar that's constantly going whenever you're on the show floor or anywhere else because of the hundreds, if not thousands, of people that are all packed into this area. But then all of a sudden, like, at the edge of my hearing, I start to hear Sarah's song, Saria's song, (laughs) you know, from the Lost Woods. (laughs) And... It becomes literally, I, I, I flash back to when I was a kid playing Ocarina of Time and like instinct drives in and I'm going in the direction listening to the song. Like two or three minutes later, going in an intersection, making a right, making a left, trying to find where the song is coming from. I, I must find this, it. <laughs> I come upon this booth, beautiful, simplistic booth that's making handmade ocarinas. Hmm. <laughs> Hopefully, I, you can get the photo to show up at some point near this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, beautiful ma- handmade ocarinas. And when I say beautiful, I mean beautiful and fucking cheap. 25 bucks, 30 bucks. There was one that was done to scale of the actual ocarina of time. I think it was only 100 bucks. I have that, actually. I have that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> we, everyone who played Ocarina of Time by this time, already has an ocarina. If you don't, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> this is a necessity to all geekdom. But anyway, while like I walk up to them, 
and there's two, three people playing Saria's song. They're playing the, the Lost Woods. <laughs> oh my god, it's freaking beautiful. Hopefully if you get the if the video works, you'll be able to like hear them play. And all of while this is happening, I I'm holding my tablet and recording as this like is going on. Immediately people start bunching up around me. Everyone starts recording because it seems to like they just randomly started and then there were people behind us that were also humming along, whistling along. <laughs> and this is something that only happens in conventions or Comic-Con or something like that. There's like this weird subliminal unity between everyone. Everyone is ridiculously nice compared to like, this is fucking the middle of New York. <laughs> you bump into someone, you're lucky if they don't punch you in the face. Here, everyone's saying sorry, they're making sure that nobody dropped anything, they're making sure that everything's orderly fashion. I don't know, you gotta love it. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's one of those weird times where you can't complain about the people, and I love complaining about people because I hate people. But here, I can't hate them. They're not giving me anything to hate. <laughs> <laughs> you got cosplaying girls, beautiful women who took so much time in their cosplay that it's just, and oh my god, the groups of people. There were like, uh, there was the entire first uh, generation Power Rangers. There was, uh, there was the gang of predators again. These like four or five guys that were like seven or eight feet tall with like the whole predator getup. Freaking <laughs> awesome. I, nice. I met this guy in the front door, Freakazoid. Not very well thought out, but kind of makes sense since it's Freakazoid. <laughs> and of course, you know, fat, hairy, Hispanic Wonder Woman. Yes. You're still on that. Yeah. So, a funny story about that. That guy went viral, by the way. If you were following Comic-Con on uh, Facebook or Twitter or any other... He went viral, <laughs> and he won the costume, the cosplay contest. Continuously. <laughs> for all three days. <laughs> it was pretty fucking epic. Moving along, back to actual video games. Sorry, it's just that Comic-Con is just special. Special is right. And I definitely suggest, if anyone ever has the chance to experience it... Go for it. It's worth it's worth every dime. It's worth every penny. Yeah, I've been there twice. This is the first year in a, in, a, in a while that I haven't gone. And if we get enough positive reviews about this, then I promise to organize a way of getting Jack here and myself <laughs> to not only go to Comic-Con on the four-day tour, as in, like, we go in the first day that's just for press, and then the rest of the day is just for fun, to do an episode. We can do a walking episode. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. And if we tell you ahead of time, you can actually, you know, join us in the walking episode. How about that? <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. Just saying, it would be a hell of a thing. Hey, we all we know is that when, uh, you know, while this guy was having fun, I have to drive past the fucking place to go to work. And, I know. uh, <laughs> you so dick. Awesome. So we, we go to Starbucks, um, right in New Jersey, right before you go on to the Washington Bridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going there filled to the brim with people dressed up in cosplay. We're like, yep, it's that day. <laughs> it's that time of the year again, folks. We found um, we found uh, was it, a taxi filled with uh, uh, what do you call it? All people wearing devil horns. I'm like, I feel bad for that driver. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently Satan's family is taking a, you know, taking a holiday. <laughs> they all decide to pick one taxi. <laughs> Uh, good times, good times. But, you know, while you nerds played, you know, I did some real work, like build a $6,000 server. Oh. Boom. It's a beautiful, beautiful server. And we lost you, Andy. Hello? And you're back. Sorry about that. I don't know what the hell just happened. Hmm. It just broke into pure static. <laughs> Happens. It like almost got my ear bleeding. That sucks. Anywhere, where were we? We were... Oh, yes. You were at a Starbucks and such and seeing a bunch of people with devil horns get on a cab. Yep. Okay. So I said that I built a $6,000 server. 
Ooh. It's pretty bitching. <laughs> I would imagine. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's awesome. 24 So is it uh, at a drives. data center or is it uh, iso- uh, like, do you have it local? Oh, I have two of them. I have one that's local and one in a data center. Of course. Let me With, get back up. Uh, no, actually, it's a SQL web server. It's, um, you know, it's got everything on them. I so mean, one's for traffic management. The other one's for what? In-house? No, it's it's a fucking beast. It's, it's running ESXi 5.5, which just came out last month. Smacksy. Uh, oh, yeah. It's really good. Uh, so I have like the entire office is running off of one of them. And then now the, all our entire websites are running off of the other. That's they're, pretty cool. They're twins. <laughs> $12,000 of awesome. That is a lot of money to put into, uh, that. And the beauty so, is it's not my money. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good times. So, we have a lot of actual news, which... Yeah, a lot of actual games. So, Sorry for the Comic-Con oh, thing. Yeah, well, yeah. actually, one last question for Comic-Con. Did you try, like, Mario Kart Wii U or yep, the Mario 3 Yeah, I got 3D to play thing? each one because I come in early, early in the morning. They are fun, okay? I can't deny that Nintendo still has the knack of making stuff fun. So, yes, the Mario Kart is definitely something that I would play with friends if somebody else had the Wii U. Yes, I would play uh, Wind Waker if I had the Wii U, like, for hours on end, simply just to see the animations, because just, just seeing islands from a distance is beautiful. It's like a moving work of art. And uh, what was it? Uh, oh, there was a bunch of other games that they revealed. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage. I'm so sorry. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I only went on the show floor on, on late Friday and the early Saturday. But uh, beyond that, just way too many panels and not enough time. Hmm. But yes, for Wii U fans out there or for people who have Wii U, you made a good decision. You made a good decision. Sure, play. I did. You know, I only bought it the day the fucker came out, and I only play Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on if it. If you don't have PCs <laughs> and you like the type of games that Nintendo does, then yes, you made a good choice. Because they are fun, they are wholesome. They're and they good, are but I would I would still suggest people hold off until you know next spring when they have the Smash Brothers and they have you know the Mario Kart Wii U uh, or mm. it's Mario Kart Eight. Uh, you know, now, I mean, these are the kind of games you want. Of holding off. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm tr- I'm really curious as to how this segue is going to go. Watching Dogs has been holding off until spring. Oh, <laughs> Along is, with what else? <laughs> Drive Club. So, and but there, Sony's still saying, you know what? It's still going to be a launch exclusive. Still, you know. Bang. What? Watch Dogs but, wasn't going to be a launch exclusive. No, not Watch Dogs. Drive Club. Yeah. Yeah, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's pointless. Fucking, it's fucking pointless now, man. <laughs> well, what what sucks is. And Watch Dogs, even though it wasn't exclusive, it was something that was going to push the fucking console. Well, no, what what Sony had going for it was that the PS4 edition had like 30 minutes of additional content. But here's here's where I have to really try to understand. I've watched a few videos from like GameStop, or not GameStop, GameSpot. They, they broke the news or whatever about it. And um, they're talking about how now there is no reason to buy a PS4. And I have to say, why would you buy a console strictly off of a third-party title that you can run on your current consoles or you can run it on a beautiful rig like mine? Yeah. Like, I was never going to get the game for PS4. I was never going to get it for the PS3. I was getting it for PC. So I I just don't understand, like, why people, their decision was, oh, I got to get a PS4 because of this game. It's like, but it's also coming out on the Xbox One. You know, I, I don't understand where this logic is. I mean, you buy a console strictly for its exclusives. Uh, that's why I bought a Wii U. I bought it. Problem so... is that I'm keeping on. True. <laughs> okay, so back to like PlayStation news. Um, we were just talking about a little bit of uh, the lack of games, but um, yeah, it kind of. Obviously, sucks. it's not going to be <laughs> PS3 has no game anymore. There, there, there are games. It's just that they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot with these really, really, like, yeah. pulled-back releases. Like, what the I hell mean, I'm glad they're doing them, but 
I just think they should have done them earlier on, not wait till literally 30 days. Now, I mean, part of the problem was people who were really concerned about their pre-orders because uh, you could buy a bundle, a launch bundle with uh, Watch Dogs included. And, you know, at least Amazon and GameStop were happy to announce that if you pre-ordered that bundle, you'll still get your console, the game will come later on. So yeah. you don't have to worry about waiting until the game is released to get your console. So I'm glad that they're doing that. Um, but that just sh you know proves to show that I will never pre-order a bundle because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would be shit in my pants if, uh, if, if I found out about this. So... Yeah. Yeah, so I mean that that sucks about the delay. Uh, it has been confirmed that Drive Club is delayed. No surprise there. So it looks like no one's getting the uh, PlayStation Plus edition. That sucks. No. No. Now there are a few things with the PlayStation Four. For one, uh, something came out this week, and it's these Brazilians that are pissed pissed <laughs> yeah but like this. you need to understand that it's not sony that's causing this problem brazil it's your fucking government okay i researched more into it and it's because the brazilian government has a high import charge which is about yeah. 60 to 70 percent of the cost so you take which is it one of the biggest reasons why the movement for uh video games or the video game market itself has never really focused or, or entered South America simply because of the ridiculous tax rates. Exactly. And also, understand, I've heard dumbass people saying, we are basically the same value as a dollar in America. Nope. No, nope. you're not. You have a two to one ratio. So for yep. every two of your reels, it's one American dollar, you dumb fucks. So they don't when. Call it the third world for nothing. Exactly. So people are like, well, well, it's going to cost about 4,000 reels. So now you may be saying, well, wait, okay, it's almost 4,000 reels. So that would mean it's equivalent to 2,000 American dollars. Uh, not quite. Uh, if you factor in the fact, if you take the $400 or whatever, raise it by 70%, <laughs> you're, you're, you're paying this ridiculous tax. And sorry, guys, there's nothing we can do about it. And you can't expect us to feel sorry for you. This is your problem. Fix it. It's not something that Sony created. It's not like, you know, you're, they're forgetting the fact that the PS3 was also heavily overpriced in Brazil. You know, yep. move. Like, I mean, someone even said it would be <laughs> cheaper to uh, go on a four-week vacation to America buy a console and fly back and still pay less than it would be to buy a ps4 in brazil yeah pretty much okay then do it if not you know i'm going to start a little business i'm going to just start selling ps4s to people through ebay to brazil <laughs> oh man that might be a bad, not a bad idea <laughs> i'm selling it to my cousin <laughs> <laughs> uh replay of my cousin Vinny for some reason <laughs> I don't know. But um, that that's one news. Another news is the PS4 demo kiosks, which has a funny, funny, funny uh, problem. Um, funny it, guy. A funny guy, <laughs> yeah. You know, funny how. <laughs> ha ha, funny. Do I, do I amuse you? <laughs> you find me amusing? <laughs> do I'm, I make you laugh? <laughs> am I a clown? <laughs> Oh, I love wise, uh, not wise guys. What was that was good fellas. It was good fellas. Or... Yes. No, it's good fellas. Yeah, <laughs> I love that movie. Um, so if you go to the website that Sony has, um, I'll even I'll I'll put a link below. It's pretty funny. It's called experienceplaystation.com, and if you type in your zip code, you will find that your PlayStation Four that you can try out is in very funny locations. Um, some people have found that you can play the PS4 at a morgue. You can play it on the runway of an airport. You can, <laughs> you can play it at your local Home Depot. Well, you know, when you think PlayStation 4, you think Home Depot. 
it turns out there's a glitch. So basically, it's not really showing any real locations that the system is is actually oh, located. Um, but I, uh, for shits and giggles, I punched in mine and tried to find within a hundred uh, mile radius. I mean, right now it says that my PlayStation 4 could be located at a GE Home Improvement Store, so that's great. Um, but if I search within 100 miles, the closest um, place besides the one that's listing is um, in Garden City, New York. And I'm not going to drive 80 to Garden miles <laughs> to Garden City, New York <laughs> to play a PS4. Now, a lot of people are also saying that, you know, th- there's nothing within 100 miles. Like, so where the fuck is Sony putting these damn consoles? I would expect them to put it in popular places such as Garden State Plaza. You would hint, expect hint. wrong. <laughs> well, what I'm going to do is I think in the next few days I'm going to call up some of my local areas. Like, they say they're supposed to be at Targets, GameStops, Best Buys, um, Walmart. So I'm going to call the local ones around here and try to find at least one that has it. Cause I definitely do want to try the console out before, you know, before it's released uh, just for, you know, the sake of, you know, trying it out and I'll bring a video camera too. I'm pretty sure they won't bust my balls about doing it. Um, but I just think it's funny that, you know, they're like, check back very soon. More locations are being added daily. Well, it's been, you know, a day now and nothing. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm pumped. I mean, I know you're not Andy. I mean, you, you just tried it out briefly. I'm pumped because you know me, I'm a nerd. I'm a techie. I, I'm I just, a nerd too. I can't wait techie, till the day I get to gut one of these fuckers open. Cause I would I love just, to see I the insides. Catch the bug. Unfortunately, I did not catch the bug. Well, you're not the only one. Uh, a lot of people are saying that this upcoming generation isn't quite as exciting as it was last gen. And I have to admit, I think there was a lot more buzz. I think there was a lot more excitement over um, the beginning of last generation. Yeah. You know, when when everyone was like, oh, my God, you have to buy a high-def television to play the PS3. I mean, oh, wait, I have to buy two high-def televisions to play the PS3. Oh, wait, wait, nope, I have to buy one again. Um, you know, it was just that excitement that, you know, right now is just not there. And and partially I have to fault is because PCs have grown exponentially in performance and power. So what you're seeing from these consoles isn't anything new. It's not something that, you know, will really make you go ooh and ah. It's like, yeah, seen it, you know, welcome yeah. to, you know, a few years ago. And and that's the kind of thing. Whereas when the last generation came out, it last was, generation was the first time we had high definition gaming. Well, also what? the last the last generation when it first came out, it was just a hair better than the best PC hardware. But then a few months after those consoles came out, Nvidia launched the eight thousand series, and, and it's that was been a game, yeah, that's, over. game over. <laughs> Will continue while they failed again. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, did you hear a lot of games that are coming out for the PS4 and Xbox One are going to be at 900p upscaled to 1080? That's sad. That's fucking sad. <laughs> and they said a lot of games are struggling to get 60 frames a second. Well, actually, uh, from someone I, I work with who actually plays uh, GTA as well. He says that he's come to like find that in many other games as well that he has for his system. And he's saying that he doesn't think that it's going to change much with the new generation of consoles because he's played on new generation consoles in kiosks. Uh, not kiosks. Um, he also went to, uh, what's it called? the uh, E3? Comic-Con. Oh, Comic-Con. No, he also went to E3. Oh, okay. And he went to Comic-Con. And he, also, and he says the same as I think. He is not really impressed with the new generation of consoles. This is the guy that after like about an hour of talking, I talked him into like getting uh, Android instead of Apple (laughs) and jumping into the world of uh, PC gaming. Did you also tell him to kill himself or? Funny. Not quite that, you know, influential. Dude, I mean, he's a he's a tech guy, but he was like a business tech guy. He was never really into the whole gaming thing. I got an was... Apple device. Well, yeah, that'll well, tell you everything. Well, I, 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 I have an Apple device. <laughs> yep. <laughs> kind of dug yourself into a hole there, didn't you? Uh, sure I did, but I, I just can't grow the heart to get rid of my HTC One. I just can't. 
It's like it's like I use it every day, even though it's not my primary phone right now. It's like I every time I pick it up, I'm like, if only. <laughs> Yeah, there are just a little bit of pet peeves. I have to say the Android still needs to fix. One of them being charge times. Why is it that my iPhone can go from zero to 100 in two hours and my HTC One takes four? Well, I'm sorry, a bowling pin it has better balance than, I don't know, a utility knife. But, <laughs> but at least I, I can use a utility knife to shave. If I were to use a bowling pin to shave... Well, I, I'd probably be locked in a room with a lot of cushions. <laughs> just saying. I'm just uh, imagining this actually becoming reality. Well, this is, that is what the iPhone is. The, an Android device is, you know, one of these, like, Swiss Army knives. Uh, a Windows phone is like a really, really big knife. That's very sharp. <laughs> but that's it. It's just a knife. The iPhone is a spoon. No, the iPhone is a bowling pin. It's a fucking bowling pin. I thought you were going to give it credit and call it no. a spoon. Because with a spoon, you could actually kill something. <laughs> Slowly, you can, but no, you could wait, actually you, kill something. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. You can kill somebody with a bowling pin. Yeah, but it's more, you know, safe and stupid proof than, say, a large spoon. <laughs> um so yes uh kiosks we always keep going off track but you know what that's the fucking show get used to it yeah if they're not used to it by now then they're not never oh, no i love it. some of the tangents and, and some of the comments from last week's episode were priceless but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know the console's coming out people aren't excited it's true i mean i'm excited because it's just new hardware i love hardware I really do. Um, I do want to see how... Oh, did, did you hear that there was a red light of death on this fucker? What? <laughs> no, they said a few of the kiosks, they had them running in those, like, glass tubes or whatever, the, you know, those plastic cases. Yeah. They have them in there. And because there's, like, no circulation of air inside them, the fucker overheats. So that blue light that shines on the on the side of the console actually turns red if the console overheats. Oh my god. So now everyone's calling it the red line of death, red light of death. <laughs> it's like it's not dead yet. Every generation has a fucking like Well, no end people all, you know. people like for instance when I when my Wii U crashed, ever, uh, you know, I I guess I was, you know, I shouldn't have called it the black screen of death, but you know the the console turns on, but the controller doesn't connect, and nothing is displayed on the screen. It took me to remove the CMOS battery on the bottom of the console. It's just one little screw, and it just slides right out. Once huh. you pull it out and uh, turn back on the console, it resets whatever it was that was fucked up, and then the console worked perfectly. Then you just throw the battery back in. How about that? Um, you know, so people are like fake this is fake it wasn't really broken no shit it wasn't broken it was just having a glitch i mean if you don't plug in your hdmi cable is it broken or is it a glitch <laughs> <laughs> um so I, I just think the whole of death kind of thing you know they're like oh the li death which is a legitimate death the console doesn't turn back on after you get it nope um you know red ring of death which really wasn't a ring and and it's funny it was when kind you of watch, a broken ring it was like yeah it was a broken piece. it was three lights two upper one left lower was considered the red ring of death but um, you have people like when they do the whole history, like that seems to be the trend right now. If you go to game trailers or IGN or whatever, like the top five, like letdowns of last gen and <laughs> for Xbox or 60, they talk about the red ring of death and they keep using the, when you don't have a video cable attached, you know, where all four lights are flashing. They called yeah. that the red ring. That's not the red ring. <laughs> um, also I find it very odd that the old light of death is never mentioned at all in these like retroactive videos like where they're talking about hey look at the history it's like no the yellow light death is still a serious problem yeah. um it just never got the media attention that the red ring of death got you hmm. know i've seen my fair share of fucking yellow light deaths heck that's why my youtube channel is as popular as it is <laughs> yellow light death <laughs> pretty much yeah that's true uh, it's a little nostalgic going back to my older videos and rewatching them and being like, ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I can't believe I did that. <laughs> I actually do that a lot of times. I go back and I'm like, uh. What's worse is like um, at work, uh, of course, you know, I started a new job and sure enough, somebody finds out that I make YouTube videos. Uh -oh. And, oh God, uh, try explaining that to your coworkers. They're like, why do you curse at the, your camera? <laughs> <laughs> and of course they find the cbs clip where i was you know featured on the ah. news oh god so one guy spread a rumor at work saying that that's why i got fired i didn't get fired <laughs> okay oh my god what the hell yeah the guy's like being a dude she's like i this is have you ever seen this guy's youtube videos this is why he got fired i was like i never got fired <laughs> what are you talking about you, you should have gotten fired that would have made it far more interesting Sure, whatever. it would have been. I mean, all I said was, fuck you, Verizon. I mean, I never said, fuck you, where I work, but I just think it's funny. Which, by the way, he works at... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so, I work no offense in... to... <laughs> I work on the Hudson River. You can find me at that guy with a boat. <laughs> <laughs> that guy with a boat. Ah, <laughs> oh, brilliant. But yeah, Sony seems to be dropping the ball like right when they're like at the last yard, right at the I end. I don't of the... know. I don't understand like the level of exposure. I mean, look, when it was maybe it? they're burning out. Maybe they just you know didn't think this far ahead. But look at look at Nintendo. Sense, Nintendo but... had a Wii U console in every fucking Best Buy by this time. Mm. You know, what I mean, they had because I remember playing the Wii U uh, like uh, about two months before the system came out. Heck, I played it at Comic-Con for the first time <laughs> last <laughs> year. So, like, I, I don't understand what what's the point here. I mean, yes, maybe they can say, hey, look, what's the point on investing in having people try out the console when we were already sold out of our pre-orders? So maybe yeah. that's the mindset. It's like, well, the system is selling itself. We haven't had to do shit. It prints money. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> Wii U. It prints money. It prints money. I remember that. Nintendo Wii, they had the first five commercials, and then they just didn't do any commercials for three years because the system was just always sold out. Yeah. Now, Wii U. Well, there's no uh, point in it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not talk about Wii U. <laughs> no. No. Just don't. Let it go. She's dead, Jim. She's dead. <laughs> unfortunate but yeah oh i mean there's so many fucking annoyances with the wii u maybe we'll, we'll call this episode wii u a year in review <laughs> uh, it rhymes um no the console i mean it is faster than it was at launch now people forget it had a day one patch now everyone's talking about ooh, there's gonna be a day one patch for the xbox one there's gonna be a day one patch for the ps4 yeah, it didn't work so well for Nintendo, so I'm not looking forward to it for these damn consoles. <laughs> um, second, the the system is just slow overall. I mean, downloading things takes forever. Still does. They have not improved that at all. Updates, um, the last console update I had to do for the console took an hour. Not kidding. It's sitting right next to the wireless router. I mean, it, it, there's literally an inch from the fucking antenna to my console and it takes an hour um you know that's why I, I don't go wireless kids just well, don't the fucking machine is wireless only unless you buy this stupid adapter yeah nintendo's fucking stupid you want to you want a digital so distribution network more and you'll secure only... and less buggy connection you're going to have to spend more exactly which, I mean, look, my, my consoles are typically hardwired. Um, the Xbox 360 and PS3 are tied directly into my router. Um, and I put, you know, the port forwarding is all set up as well as custom uh, firewall rules. So it allows all traffic on the, just the consoles itself. <clears throat> but, you know, with the PS4, I'm going to be hardwiring it. I'm going to have fiber optic audio for audio <laughs> i wonder what else i could use it for <laughs> why i guess because you can use it for anal probing um Jesus. <laughs> did not see me going there did you don't think anyone wanted you to go there <laughs> it's gonna have hdmi of course to my playstation 3d display Ooh. um and of course hardwiring into 
my router. Gonna be fun. Woo! Woo. I'm still not excited. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's impossible to get excited when I you feel can... bad. It's like I want to be excited. I want to lose sleep saying I can't For my wait. gaming rig, I'm actually losing sleep over my gaming rig waiting for the last few pieces to get here. Because I've sp I will spend, in total, around maybe a, one and a, half, a grand and a half. Because I'm, I'm trying to future-proof this bitch. Future-proof what? My uh, rig. Oh. Because I've changed the uh, plan, I've changed a few pieces. Um, I'm getting something for a little bit more compatibility, a little bit more oomph. I'm trying to get a little bit of future proof on this bitch. A grand and a half in total of parts, you know, not counting like okay. me putting it all together. Okay, it reminds me of this. Um, here we go. I'm going to play a little clip for you. And I'm getting a system that is clearly, clearly. Hey! I'm back. Wow, I'm back. There you are, Eric. Mom! Mom, they did it! Eric. Wait, uh. Hey! I'm back. Wow, I'm back! There you are, Eric. Mom! Mom, they did it! Eric, you have to come home. You can't just wait here for that game to come out. No, I know. You're right, Mom. I need to learn to be patient. I think I can wait three weeks for Nintendo Wii to come out. But, honey, it's only September. That Nintendo Wii doesn't come out for two months. Oh, what? God. No! <laughs> no! You sent me back too far! Hey! Do it over! Who are you talking to, Marvin? I can't wait two months! I can't! There has to be a way around this! Hey, kid, somebody's on the phone for you. Hello? No! No! I know what you're thinking! Do not do it! You just need to be patient and wait the two months. Do you hear me? <laughs> I oh, my buzz, Cal. Uh, I, I love that. Like, I remember that, and I always think about it. Whenever something's coming out, I just think of Go God Go from South Park, where he's like, come in, come in. <laughs> <laughs> just pacing back and forth in front of a GameStop. <laughs> Anyway, what I was getting to was <laughs> that the uh, I'm getting a rig that's about a grand and a half, and I'm getting basically the same rig you would get if you paid three to five k. So it's actually uh, the savings are actually pretty like decent. That's because he bought it at a bargain price. <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> this is Amazon, man. <laughs> I'll never forget. Look, when one of my jobs I worked at, there was this guy who you know he was pretty well paid um and he was also our technician he was our cto this guy went on ebay and bought 256 gigabyte flash drives now oh, at oh. the time they did exist seriously but he was buying them for 40 dollars <laughs> oh no i already know how this ends <laughs> Uh, he uh, gets them in. I look at the packaging immediately. I'm like, something is fishy about this. <laughs> he plugs it in, looks at the format, says 256 gigs. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> about uh, about 10 minutes later, <laughs> the fucking thing stops working. <laughs> he formats it, and it shows up as a as a uh, eight megabyte <laughs> flash drive. Uh, <laughs> autism intensifying. <laughs> now, it it wasn't bad enough that he bought one. He bought five more oh, after okay. that. <laughs> and what every the... single one of them just <laughs> had this weird issue, you know, where they just died ten minutes after using them. Oh my god. So he convinces the owner of the company to buy more. <coughs> He's oh, like why? <laughs> you should have fired his ass. <laughs> oh, this guy, it was hysterical his response to this cuz he was like I don't understand why doesn't it work. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> 
first of which that size it, oh it, it, it get it gets better it gets real better he 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 makes me package them up and ship them to Kingston <laughs> saying that we need a warranty replacement cuz these drives don't work uh, <laughs> God. We get an email back stating that these all these drives are counterfeit. <laughs> really? <laughs> How'd you guess? Ah, <laughs> uh. <laughs> good times. <laughs> oh God! My sure, God. sure enough, eBay awesome. sends us an email stating that they're refunding our money because they were scams. <laughs> <laughs> I think eBay should have just kept the money and said, did look, you at least open did you one of them? Did I open one of them? Did anyone in their right mind open one of them to see if they were, you know, I don't know, <laughs> just a little tiny SD card to the USB? <laughs> I cracked one of them open um, and it looked like a very well done fake. Oh, I mean, they did a pretty damn good job, but. I mean, even I knew something was up based on the packaging. Like, I knew that the, the quality of the printing for the box was pretty sketchy. I just have no words. Mm -hmm. no words. I, I just think it's funny because I look at it today. You could buy a 128 gig flash drive from Micro Center for $70. That's still more money than what this guy was trying to buy 256 gig flash drives for. <laughs> <laughs> And it was USB 2.0. Imagine filling up a 256 gig flash drive at 30 megabytes a second. I don't... <laughs> I am actually at a loss for words, good sir. <laughs> you have brought me to a loss of words. Uh, I love stupid people. Because it, it just it's one of those things where you're like, yes, it's always the dumb people that are rich. <laughs> But they're not going to be rich for long because their <sighs> stupidity will catch up. Not only are you spending like a ridiculous amount of money, but you bought more than one. <laughs> Twice. Like, after the first one doesn't work, let's just buy more. <laughs> That's the one thing that I've noticed about rich people. Like people who have like... If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. No, yeah, they're the type of people that when their car breaks down, they just buy a new car. They see it funny when someone tries to fix their own shit, you know? <laughs> Look at Where the simpleton. Where someone tries to fix their own computer, when they try to fix their own, like, fucking car. They think that, ah, oh, just buy a new one, because it'll be easier. No, no, it won't. <laughs> I love that because if you go on eBay, you can buy a lot of broken televisions that yeah. literally just have one bad blown cap. So you could buy a, a, a two thousand dollar television for like a hundred bucks shipped. It takes you ten minutes to crack open the back, two dollars for the replacement part. You put it in there, and you just scored yourself a fucking awesome TV. Yeah. So, and I've done that. I have fixed televisions that have blown caps in them. And it's amazing how they just work now. <laughs> how about that? <laughs> oh, my something. God. And it works. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> kind of like that my PS... That blew my mind. Kind of like my PlayStation 3, you know. Fucking I mean, witchcraft. Still work. <laughs> it is witchcraft. Do, listen, do you still have your PS3 or no? No, I took it apart and took out the Blu-ray uh, laser. I was uh, oh, going to use fucker. it for... Something else? <laughs> well, maybe, you know, you could have just asked me and I would have fixed it for Dude, you. Dude, this was like two years. No, no. This was uh, the beginning of this year, uh, right before I moved back to New Jersey. So, no. And that was right before we decided to let you on this wonderful podcast that you have single-handedly destroyed. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> Let's just say, look, Kira doesn't like us anymore because of you. Yeah, okay. Kevin's not on the show anymore because of you. No, it's not because of me. It's because of bronies, you know? <laughs> he, he just can't Actually, like... it's because of you. That's your own damn fault, man. <laughs> You're the one who sent him the freaking... Dude, know. I saw him the other day. He has a full fucking Santa Claus beard. <laughs> he that's looks awesome. like Chris Kringle as a kid. <laughs> oh, pedophile. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's the pedophile beard. Oh, I felt so bad for him the one day because he, he's just walking to work and I'm driving by and I'm like, should I drive him? 
<laughs> no, no, no. I, I only drive my friends. <laughs> oh, this is stupid. Uh, who else isn't on the show anymore? Uh, you scared away Gamer Rant. You scared away DPW Gaming. Um, well, that's a shame. So much was lost. So much, and now <laughs> I just have you. <laughs> Yep, well, that's folks, also your own damn fault. this is the very last episode. I officially <laughs> quit. <laughs> Andy, it. Andy has scared me off too. So this is now Andy's show. Oh God, and you know that I'm not going to do it. That's that's for damn sure. <laughs> uh, just kidding, just kidding. Which actually, people took me serious last week. Last week, I was joking around saying I was going to kill off my YouTube channel. And then, like, there's, like, five or six people writing in the comments, like, don't do it, don't do That's it. That's actually I'm kind the... of a negative since it was only five or six. Would have kept that to myself. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you said negative? Yeah, because it was only five or six. <laughs> I told you, I said it was five or six. Yeah, exactly. So how's that negative? Because, oh, forget it, the joke is lost. Apparently. You've killed the joke, Jack. You've killed the joke, Jack. You're a joke killer. Okay. I want you to know this. Everything you are doing is wrong. You need to know this. By the way, my boss actually says that. Hmm. Like he walks up right behind you and says, I want you to know everything you are doing is wrong. <laughs> nice. And just walks away. It's why like, okay. Why do we always get bosses that are either Polish, Russian? <laughs> I don't know. I just keep, I keep getting fucked over. I can't get an American. Shit. <laughs> They're straight off the boat, man. Straight off the boat. Oh, this guy boat. went to school here. This guy has, like, friends with some corporations here. This guy's not fresh off the boat. He just chooses to speak fobbish in order to, I don't know, I think he make, makes no, it more... No, no, I, I don't understand you. No, I don't. I don't. No, no. What do you why, mean taxes? I don't understand what taxes are. Everything you're doing, I do not understand. Something you did must be wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. The program I, does not work that I, way. I have degree. You don't. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the program is not wrong. Uh, you are wrong. <laughs> uh, I, what, you know what's really sad is I have a video, and I, I mean, I'm never going to upload it, but I have a video of my coworker driving and playing Yahtzee at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And at the end of the video, he says, oh, this guy over here is swerving. What is he doing, playing Yahtzee? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's pretty funny. Oh, God, we have gone on so many fucking rants now. I know, but you know what? That's what, what makes a podcast great. It's like, it's not really the news. It's the in-between filler. Well, it filler. makes it something. <laughs> it's, you know, why else do you want to buy an Oreo? It's not for the cookie. It's for the cream. Oh, did you see that there was a, oh, there was a scientific study that found that Oreos were just as addictive as crack? I agree, because I have a fucking box of Oreos right next to me. <laughs> Dude, they actually did a study, and they found that crack has the same, like, addictive property, or the same addictive over, uh, like, over time, a person can be as addicted, if not more addicted, to Oreos as they would be to crack. Holy it shit. It seems to just be, like, a, a general chemical imbalance in the brain that's causing that's caused by addiction. So is that why every time I go food shopping I walk past the Oreos and I can't resist? Oreos, yeah. I always buy a pack of fucking Oreos. Jeez. I just uh, that and Red Bull. You can't I cannot stop drinking Red Bull. Please tell me the secret. How can I stop drinking Red Bull? You can't. You just can't. You just can't. Put the Red Bull down now. Just do it. Uh, Quick, get that man a baby. What, what the <laughs> fuck? No, no, okay, you have to explain to me. Because I I ended the show last week with you saying, put the baby in the microwave. What the fuck does that mean? Well, does it mean literally the put the ma baby in the microwave? Well, how else are you going to get it done? No, 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 because... In the oven, they dry out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, this could be an opening to a plethora of horrible dead baby jokes. Apparently. I don't think that your audience can stand it. No, especially when I had to go to a dead baby's funeral, okay? As did I. I've had to do that before. And, and I, I actually had to plan the funeral. And I never even met the damn kid. 
<laughs> well, and, uh, uh, that that was a very low joke. <laughs> There's no such thing as low jokes. Just people with very, very, very tight puckered senses of humor. <laughs> uh, yours is off the fucking charts. I enjoy life and humor, and also a good dead baby joke every now and then. And this guy is along one with that dead baby jokes. Like, do you know how do you get a Jewish girl's number? Oh God! Just pull up her sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> You're just bad, man. You're just bad. I'm horrible. I am horrible. <sighs> Let's find one more piece of news to close out this fucking show. <laughs> yep. Uh, ooh, breaking news. PS4 delayed till spring 2014. What the fuck? Was there any reason actually given? I'm just kidding. Or is it... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised, though. Because the way that they're doing it right now, they've kind of cut themselves down with taking away a couple of the big titles. And I don't think it was so much Sony that made the... or, or any of the big three. I think it was actually just Ubisoft pulling back for no reason. Hmm. Or maybe some reason that we don't know it, or we won't know until after. Uh, did you see the video where they tested out the uh, Valve's controller? <gasps> Ooh... Someone unbox a fucking PS4. Wir haben einen Karton bekommen. Das ist ein normaler Karton. Vorne, <laughs> Seite, Rücken. Hello, you gotta listen to this shit. Von vorne. You might be able to decode this shit. UPS Express. UPS. Was ist hier drin? Die PlayStation 4. Ja und äh, ich muss mich jetzt erstmal ein bisschen beruhigen. Wir packen sie jetzt aus. Also erstmal den Karton, in dem der Karton ist, in dem die PlayStation 4 ist. In dem hoffentlich die PlayStation 4 ist. Die Rechnung ist sauber durchtrennt. Highly fucking zwei drin. Nein. No. Und zwar da ist sie. Da geht mein Cutter hin. And he drops the razor blade. Um es jetzt nicht zu spannend zu machen. Achtung. <lacht> Achtung. Ja, das könnte auch Schnell. ein Druck sein. Ist es aber nicht, denn es ist der, ich zeige es euch mal von vorne. Testing Kit PS4. D-U-H-T. The Fura. Ein, ein, ein. Ja, dann äh, legen wir mal los. Hier oben. Ein Wolf, ein Reich, ein Fjord. Ich schaue es mir auch nach euch an. Sorry. Jetzt Die kommt Internet gleißendes Internet. Licht aus der Packung. Was haben wir denn hier? Einmal eine Empfangsbestätigung. Die muss ich nachher abgeben. Noch einmal eine kleine Beschreibung für den Testing Kit in Englisch. Die Warnings und alles sowas. Dann habe ich hier noch äh, das DOC Informational Statement oder wie es auf Deutsch heißt, wo steht es denn hier? So, das äh, Dänemark, Deutschland, die Konformitätserklärung zur R- und TTE-Richtlinie. Nun denn, aber jetzt kommen wir mal ans Eingemachte. Ich würde sagen, we should totally do a voiceover that's called a translation and we'll just say like stupid things like if you yeah. ever uh, disobeyed if you are, <laughs> your system will die. <laughs> oh god. I really want to do it, man. Like every other sentence you and I have just come up with some random thing. To yeah. do. <laughs> Hitler is the real king of this world or something. <laughs> Congratulations, you get a gold star. <laughs> now it's time for the stress test. Off to the gas chambers. <laughs> oh. Papiaden. Papiaden, Juden. Papiaden. You know how those Germans love their papers. <laughs> okay, this is getting pretty fucking dark. Yeah, it's getting pretty bad, man. <laughs> you know what? I think we're gonna have to end it for today. Uh, Quick, get that man a baby. 
mit zwei Rumble Packs. Die Buttons kennen wir ja noch von den vorherigen Controllern. Ich werde jetzt mal so drei you know, Schubs hier abmachen. We will watch this later. <lacht> oh God, we need to do that. And uh, enjoy our horrible non-existent sense of humor. Oh yeah, it's bad. Uh, this is like one of the worst episodes in a while. <laughs> yeah, even though there's there should be a ton of like videos and, and pictures of Comic Con, but oh well. I digress. Off to the gas chambers. <laughs> yeah, old. <laughs> That's that's enough of our shenanigans. I think we should all just agree to have a good night, enjoy your nerdiness, and platypus, everybody. <laughs>